Robert Parks here. Over the past two months, I've posted an average of one technical video a week with a couple of car ones thrown in. This weekend, I'm in Indiana to spend Mother's Day weekend with my parents. So I thought I'd use this opportunity to talk about technology of a prior generation with both a modern and a do-it-yourself twist. With me today is my dad, the original R.A. Parks, or Tony, as he's known to all of his friends, and KB9YIG, to those whom he seeks change Morse code with on the radio. First, we're going to ask and answer a few questions, and then, if any luck, we're going to walk through a time-lapse video of Tony assembling a software-defined radio. Thanks for doing this, Dad. First off, time has a way of catching up with all of us. You'll be celebrating your 77th birthday this year. How are you feeling? Pretty good, really. For anyone uh, from my generation uh, and younger who grew up in the PC era, what is ham radio? Ham radio is a, is a way of communicating over the radio with other people to exchange information about their uh, setups and uh, other technical things. When and where did you first get into ham radio? As a youngster, when I was 11, 12 years old, I, I first became a licensed amateur radio operator out in San Diego. So what is software-defined radio, and how is that different than what you had growing up? Well, software-defined radio is, is where the signals are digitized, then processed by a computer to do various signal processing uh, applications on the, the information or the voice. Okay, and how is that different from what you had when you were 11? Well... When I was younger, it was it was all done with uh, analog circuits. What is uh, soft rock, and how did that come about? Uh, when I uh, after I retired in two thousand, I got back into amateur radio, and purchased a, a board stack that was a little one watt software defined radio, and uh, looking at what had been done, I thought maybe I could do something like this, only but much simpler and less costly. Now these are available in both uh, kit and belt form. That's right. Uh, do you know how many kits you've shipped? Uh, over 5,000. Okay, and how many of these have you personally built? Probably around six or 700. How long does it take you to assemble the uh, most complex one, the RXTX Ensemble Transceiver? Uh, about seven hours. And the least complex? The least complex, uh, the high-frequency receiver, takes me about three to four hours. Do you have a favorite kit? Yes, the, the high-frequency receiver, the RX2. And uh, do you have a favorite frequency band? Uh, yes, 40 meters. Who else has helped make soft rock a successful tool? There's a, a, a software, a soft rock 40 a Yahoo group. And there's some guys that have really been uh, helpful to uh, help others build the kits and get them working. So your daughter Susan and her husband Mike are involved in the business. What do they do for you? Well, Mike... Uh, uh, looking at how I was doing things, decided to help me out by putting it on a better a business footing. And, and Susan has been involved in, in doing the accounting and ordering materials for the kids. Before we launch into a compressed video of a soft rock build, do you have any advice that you'd share with anyone attempting to assemble one of these? Uh, yes, uh, be patient. Uh, make sure the right part goes in the right location. Check your soldering. Look for solder bridges. Make sure your soldering is clean. And, and things work pretty well if you do that. The following video is intended to give you an idea of what's involved in a soft rock assembly. It's not intended as a how-to video and was shot at a fairly wide angle. If there's any interest in a close-up video, perhaps we can do that on a future visit. <music> Thank you. 
Thanks for sticking with us. If you like this content, please subscribe, like, or share. Thanks again, and have a great day.